My ex sent me photos of his wedding to make me jealous, but what I noticed in the background turned his life upside down, and I didn't even have to lift a finger. Update, I took my baby and left last night. I'm hiring a lawyer to seek sole custody. Thank you for all the advice and kind words. His son is 18 but functions at a 12, 13 year old level. He says he's high functioning but I don't think he is. My boyfriend's parents raised his son and were and still are very permissive with him. He sleeps all day and gets taken out for dinner literally every day has zero responsibilities and refuses to get a job. I know there's places that hire disabled people but he's flat out said he's not going to work. He treats his grandmother like shit and calls her horrible names such as bitch and whore. He still gets whatever he wants just handed to him. I can't stand him. My boyfriend and I have a five-month-old son together, and when he was a newborn, my peeped was so bad I was hospitalized for it. His son thinks I abandoned my son because I didn't want to take care of him and there's no convincing him otherwise. This has resulted in him screaming at me that he hates me and wants me to leave. This isn't the first time this has happened either. I've asked my boyfriend to talk to him and he says he didn't raise him and nothing would change even if he did. Now he's saying that if I can't accept his son then we can't be together. It's not about me not accepting him. I've known since the beginning of our relationship almost three years that his son is autistic and I loved him and felt maternal towards him. His own mother basically abandoned him so I felt bad for him but now I don't exactly like him since he's spoiled and entitled. I accept him but I didn't sign up to be mistreated and disrespected and be told to deal with it or leave. My boyfriend takes it like I can't accept his kids but that's not it. Honestly I'm ready to end things. The rest of his family sweeps it under the rug too. They said they're trying to teach him about pept, but it's not working so far in. I know he's jealous because he sees his dad engage with our son like he didn't with him, but I'm not gonna put up with him treating me like shit because he's projecting his anger at his mom and dad onto me. I feel that my boyfriend doesn't love or respect me by telling me to deal with it. I worry that he's going to do this to someone in public and they'll hurt him. I worry that he's going to physically attack me one day and I'm tired of not being able to take care of my son without him staring me down and he brings my son to everyone but me. I'm tired of everyone excusing it as his autism. Autistic people know better than to talk to people that way. I think it's because he's never been told a day in his life. I love my boyfriend, but I'm not prepared to deal with being verbally abused every day. His son is on meds, but they need to be adjusted. He's about to start therapy again, too. Should I leave? Told your boyfriend and his family excuse his son's mistreatment of me as it is just his autism. Boyfriend says deal with it and accept his kids or it's over. I accepted his kids, but didn't sign up to be treated like shit and told to deal with it. Ready to leave him. Now, to the next story, story two. After being abused by my stepfather, I lived with my dad. Recently, I discovered that he chose me over my former stepmother and half-sister. I was sexually abused between the ages 9, 13 by my stepfather. Both he and my mom will be behind bars for many years to come. When I was sent to live with my dad, I was broken. I barely spoke, didn't eat much of it all. I wasn't mad or angry. I was of any kind of emotion. Basically, I was alive but wasn't living. I kept my interactions with everyone to the bare minimum. I was polite but didn't go out of my way to make conversation with anyone. I was more social with my dad but I kept it to a bare minimum. I had nothing left to say to anyone. It took me two years for me to be able to allow my dad to show any form of parental affection towards me. That's how withdrawn I had become. Dad was my rock throughout the whole thing. When I experienced night terrors, I would wake up and either find my dad holding my hand or him holding me. He drove me to all of my therapist appointments. He made sure I was eating properly. There were days I would break down for no reason and he would just hold me and tell me that everything will be okay. He literally went above and beyond for me. I hated the city that we were living in. Because I had so many bad experiences there, it made living there miserable. I was so so passive it was scary. My therapist had told my dad that I was stuck in the victim cycle. I didn't know how to get out. Because of this, I was bullied quite a bit. By the time I was 15, I had been to three different schools. It got to the point where my dad pulled me out of public school and enrolled me into online classes. I was always very studious and managed to maintain a 94% average overall, but my life lacked any sort of direction. Nothing would motivate me. Looking back, Dad did spoil me, but at the time I wasn't aware of it. I was so in my own body that I barely acknowledged my surroundings. If I asked my dad for a new bedspread, I would get me a new one plus new furniture. My phone of five years broke and dad got a new one plus a laptop. I was grateful and thanked him. I did share with my half-sister and stepster at the time. Again, I was being polite. I didn't have any form of relationship with my former stepmother, stepster, or half-sister. I barely knew what it was like being a son at the time, let alone being a brother. By the time I was 16, dad had approached me and told me that he and he are moving out. I didn't question it. He had asked me to pack my things and we moved into a rental. I didn't think it was any of my business so I didn't press the issue. A year later, dad had divorced my stepmother. One of dad's business acquaintances offered him a partnership in Boston and he took it. We moved and I felt I was ready to start my senior year of high school in a public school. That year was probably the best year of my life. I was coming out of my shell. There was no fear of being judged or being the odd man out. It was as if I was like everyone else. I felt normal. 
I became more social, made a lot of friends, got into sports clubs, and went out more. Us moving probably saved my life. Because we had moved nine hours away from my half-sister, she would only come visit us on long weekends, a month during summer break. There was always a form of tension between my dad and half-sister. You could just sense it. It got to the point where as she got older, she stopped coming entirely. Me and dad have always been close. When I had graduated from high school and gave my valedictorian speech, I could see my dad crying in the crowd. I lived with my dad while I attended college. I still do for the time being. Ever since I was child, I always wanted to be a doctor. Well, I just finished my first year of medical school. Honestly, I feel like a normal young adult in society. I have a job, friends, a boyfriend whom I've been with for four years. I'm thriving in all aspects of my life. Recently, I got a FB message from my half-sister. She was apologizing a lot and I had no clue what she was talking about. Turns out, the reason why dad and I moved out from my stepmother's home was because my half-sister told my stepmother that I was watching her change. Yes, she told her mom that I was watching her change. At the time, I was traumatized of sex. Heck, I was terrified of any form of intimacy. The kid was envious of what dad was doing for me. She was so envious that she tried to move me out. Well, I guess her mom and my dad got into a big fight and I'm only going to assume that she did not want me in the house. Because we moved out, I think it's safe to assume my dad didn't believe it. How can someone be so cruel? What did I ever do to her? Those were the questions that were racing through my head. I didn't even respond. More importantly, dad never let this get back to me. Chances are if I had heard about this when I was 16, that would have been the final nail in the coffin. It also explains the tension between my dad and half-sister. This is a lot to take in, and I have a newfound respect and love for my dad. He gave up this marriage for me so I could live a normal life. Dad is away on a business trip and won't be back for a few more days. I'm missing him a lot lately. Should I bring it up to him when he returns? Also, would it be fair for me to just cut my half-sister out of my life entirely? At the same time, it's sad that their relationship is almost non-existent and I almost want to help. Teal.er Dad chose me over my stepmother and half-sister after my half-sister told a very dangerous lie that could have potentially ruined my life. Dad kept it from me for six years. Should I bring up with him? It, it, I wasn't expecting such a huge response. I just wanted to say thank you for all the feedback. It will take some time, but I will read all of them or as much as I can. As I was going through the comments, I found a number of people questioning the integrity of this. This is a part of my life. I don't normally like to talk about this. Aside from myself, my dad and close friends, not many people know about this. The fact that people are saying that it's fake. I don't know what to say. It's not my place to try and convince anyone. Believe me, there are times I wish could convince myself it's not real, but that's not possible. When I wrote this, I wasn't thinking about syntax. It was more just getting this out. People question its integrity based on grammatical errors. Forgive me, but I wasn't in the mindset to reread and go over it. As for how I became valedictorian, and a number of people were very curious. I did respond to it in the comments, but I'll post it here too. It was very unorthodox how I became valedictorian after attending a real HES for only a year. My overall average was the highest in my graduating class, but because I was in online classes for my previous years, I wasn't eligible at the time. I met with the grade coordinator and inquired about my chances and her response was the same. I broke down in front of the coordinator and I told her the truth. Being named valedictorian was something I always wanted. To be that would have been my first accomplishment that I would have achieved based on my own merit. Yes, there is also the likelihood of getting a free ride to colleges. It wasn't trying to be valedictorian for financial reasons. Money wasn't a problem, dad did make a lot. It was more this being my first official achievement. This would have helped me self-worth as well. The girl who was originally going to be valedictorian did meet with me and I told her the truth. She actually talked to the administration to let me valedictorian instead. It's something I'll forever be grateful for. That's actually how me and her became friends. Not many people would do that and in Hez. I'll be posting again, I just need a few days. Now to the next story. Story 3. An old friend of mine has been acting inappropriately towards my daughter. I am taking steps to protect her. The last few months I've been chatting to a friend more regularly than before. We've been friends for over a decade and we used to be really close, but we slowly drifted apart. I should probably mention we are both men in our 40s. It's been great catching up with him and honestly I really needed a friend so it's just been great. He's got a long-term girlfriend and two young children. A couple of months ago we visited his house for the first time. He recently moved and we weren't speaking much before that, just an occasional comment on Facebook. And me, my 14-year-old son and 20-year-old daughter spent a few hours honestly just chatting about nothing but in a good way. You know, while we were there, I noticed that he kept looking at my daughter out of the corner of his eye. I never really caught him fully looking, so I thought nothing of it, especially as he has known my kids for over a decade. I didn't mention it to my daughter as I didn't want to make her feel uncomfortable if it was nothing. A couple of months went past and we visited them again. He kept talking to my daughter and not really to me, which is fine, but it just seemed odd when my daughter has really bad anxiety and she can't really hold a conversation and she makes it clear when she's uncomfortable talking. He just seemed to keep looking at her and talking. Even if he was talking to me, he would just look at her. The final straw was last week. 
We visited them and we've been having a heat wave so we were all dressed in as minimal as possible. My daughter in a thin pair of skorts and a t-shirt. My son in a pair of athletic shorts and a gym top and me in a polo shirt and white chino shorts. Nothing unusual, just basic summer wear. When we were in conversation, he would look my daughter. When anyone told a joke, he would smirk a little or give a small laugh depending. But if my daughter told something mildly funny, he would really laugh to the point that even she would look awkward. He kept dropping out of conversation and just staring at her. I think she noticed it as well because she started to lean back in her chair to try to cover herself. Even though she was fine, she looked uncomfortable. Then when the sun set, she put on a thick jacket and zipped it up. I don't know if he's just trying to be friendly and he doesn't know how to act or if he's only inviting us round to stare at her and if so then I don't know what to do. Yes, she's 20 but she's still my little girl and this man watched her grow up, it just seems strange. I don't know if I should say something or just don't go around there again. Either way, I think it's the end of the friendship which is a shame but oh well update, it is at the end of post update from my last post. I spoke to my daughter about the whole thing and wanted to know what she thought about it all because I didn't want to say anything if she didn't think it was odd. She told me that after the first time we saw him again, a few months ago, he had appeared outside her work after she finished her shift and asked if she wanted a lift home instead of getting the bus. She said that since he was a good friend of mine, she trusted him and got in his car. On the ride home, he repeatedly touched her leg and started talking about how much she's changed since he saw her last before we all met up and how much of an adult she looks now. He told her she's growing into her body like a good girl. My daughter said that she would walk the rest of the way home because she didn't want to put, put him out too much, but he insisted on driving her all the way. She said she kept moving away from him, but he was leaning to touch her knees. She said that at a red light not long before the house he gave her his mobile number and texted himself from her phone and told her to call him if she wanted a lift or anything else. Then when she got home she went to leave the car but he grabbed her arm and asked her where his hug and kiss goodbye was. Not a new thing, he gives us all a hug every time. And when she leaned in he held her tight and whispered that she should call him. In the last few months since then he has repeatedly been sending her explicit texts and images and waiting outside her work asking her if she would like a lift home. Even though every time she said no, she said she didn't want to say anything because she didn't want to upset me as he was the only friend I had. I feel sick thinking about this. This is my daughter. She's 20 but she's still my little girl and I feel like I've put her in danger. I've messaged him asking him to stop contacting my family and I've sent him the screenshots from her phone as reasons why, but he is messaging me asking me why when she is an adult. And the only sleazy thing he's done is cheat on his girlfriend as my daughter never physically said the word stop. She just ignored him. I'm so angry at him and myself. Ida, I'd like to say thanks to everyone for the advice. Also, I've been getting a lot of mom comments and although I appreciate the sentiment very much, I am her dad. Unfortunately, her mom passed away quite a few years ago, but I really appreciate that everyone thought I was her mom. It really is the biggest compliment to me. I must be doing something right. We went and spoke to our local police and they couldn't really help us as she had willingly gotten into his car. They did say that as we have spoken to him already, they could keep a file open and if it continues, then they would be able to take action. Honestly, it seems that they don't really care about it at all, which is alarming and upsetting. We sent the screenshots and an explanation to his girlfriend, and we've had some missed calls from him, but that's not our problem. We've blocked him on everything and have completely removed him from every social media. My daughter has spoken to her work, and they have said that until she is able to find another job, they will ensure that at least one other member of staff will wait with her for the bus and wait should I will be meeting her at the first stop in our town to take her directly home on days I'm not working and on days I am. Then her grandparents will be picking her up. She is safe. I also had a lot of comments suggesting I get violent with this man, although I do appreciate that a lot of people would be choosing the other route of resolving the problem face to face. I'm not like that. I'd like to be. I'd like to say that there's no problem I couldn't solve that way, but that's simply not me. It doesn't make me a bad dad either. I found another way to solve the problem and make sure my daughter is safe and comfortable. Thank you all for your help and advice. It's nice to find some support through the internet sometimes. Relevant comments. Commenter, it's not your fault, but you need to have a sit down and talk through the socialization for women to be nice and how to get past that mental block. This is something a lot of us go through and it puts us in really awful situations. Help her understand that her safety is the most important thing. She doesn't have to be nice or put up with things like this. There's probably some very eloquent people who can speak to this topic on YouTube. It's not me, but I want to make sure she knows she doesn't have to take this shit for the rest of her life, even with the anxiety and desire not to rock any boats. OP. I've told her many times growing up that if she doesn't feel comfortable doing something, no matter what it is, then she needs to say that. It doesn't matter if it upsets someone or offends someone. All that matters is that she is safe and comfortable. I'm hoping that she will be like this from now on and I just hope that she knows I'm here for her no matter what. Also, there's an update to the post. Thank you for your comment. 
Get her a weapon. We're in the UK, so she's legally not allowed any weapons, including pepper spray. The only thing she is allowed is an alarm, which she already had anyway. We are looking into some objects which can be carried around legally or discreetly. Currently, we are looking into a key ring, which is like a long, sharpened stick, though there's not many places willing to ship them to us. I'm so very sorry to hear what you have been through, and I wish you well throughout your life. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.